I'm with Colleen Flanagan Prince, an ecologist with the National Park Service, and she tries to understand how toxins get in and move around our ecosystems. And you, as you can imagine, I've got a lot of questions. So Colleen, what kind of toxins are you looking at and why are they so darn bad? We're particularly looking at, in this case, mercury. And mercury is a natural element. It's on the periodic table. It is emitted in volcanic eruptions. It is in geothermal features at Yellowstone. And also it is emitted um, from many different anthropogenic or human caused sources. So how does the mercury go from being put into our environment into the, the food web? So mercury, when it's emitted, that's one source is the airborne contributions of mercury to say a national park. It travels long distances, it comes out in rain or snow or even in dust or sea spray. And then when it falls onto the landscape, um, bacteria or little microbes convert it into a form that is available for organisms to uptake. And so then it enters the food web. Biomagnification is the buildup of that contaminant like mercury in the food chain as you move into higher orders. How do you measure mercury in an ecosystem? So there are several different ways. You can look at the soil, you can look at the water, you can look at the deposition, so the rain or the snow. We are particularly looking at a bioindicator. So that's a living organism that indicates or represents the amount of a pollutant, like mercury, in the ecosystem. We're doing that with dragonfly larvae. So because they are ubiquitous or everywhere, uh, essentially, um, they are more easily found. They are smaller than fish, which are also a bioindicator of mercury, but easier to collect and to, you know, truck out from distances away from a certain trailhead, right? So, um, and also cheaper to analyze. So, so how, uh, how do you go about collecting dragonfly larvae? We uh, uh, work with our groups to each don a net and waders and a life jacket and to get in the water and to use the net to kind of jab and sweep the bottom sediment of um, the waterway. So we work um, with a system that's been defined by our partners at the U.S. Geological Survey to uh, use spoons and Ziploc bags, you know, very sophisticated <laughs> laboratory materials to um, preserve the uh, specimen and um, provide for lab analysis. What are some things that we should be doing to keep mercury from getting into our ecosystems? Historically, over time, coal combustion for power generation has been a, the main source of mercury in the United States emitted to the atmosphere. So if we can use clean energy or conserve or reduce our energy consumption, that does serve to even reduce pollutants like mercury and other air pollutants that get into our atmosphere and are transported to clean places in our backyards. So, uh, you know, even whatever, biking or walking instead of driving a car, like these are ways in which we can um, support uh, cleaner air quality. Oh, well, Colleen, sounds like you got a really cool job. Yeah, I do feel very fortunate about my job and it does like, I am excited about it. <laughs> 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 Say what? <laughs> Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram at Outsider.